can you showcase to me, uh, um, can you browse to where you, where you went so that you can point people to what you have done before we installed CloudNet? So uh, there's maybe multiple ways you can get to there, but there's this window system properties. What yes. I did in is advanced system properties, something like that. And then there's the environment variables. <clears throat> and then I went into the system variables. There's a path variable and I edited it. And then I found the path that, um, I don't know if you can, we can see it bigger, but yeah. yeah. Can you add the blue thing so that people can see this? So, so you added the last line to your path so that it can actually find the uh, command line tools, right? That's right, because that's where that git, or that's where that CL. Yeah, but yeah. you installed not just the Visual Studio compiler, you installed the build tools, right? And while you installed the Visual Studio compiler, did you, did you uh, click on install the build tools in the command line or not? So in um, installing the um, Visual Studio, I think I can show what I have turned on. Yes, that would be great. Yeah, if you can do that. Think about, so that was, it's in, um, So in this um, VS installer, <clears throat> I don't know where it's, it's starting. Yeah, there is a thing on the bottom. They see. Yeah, good, excellent. So this visual installer, uh, installer, okay. So you, you, you have installed, in case you had it previously installed, you pressed on modify. Yeah. And, and then, then once I needed to make sure we're there. That's uh, right. So, and then uh, there you find, uh, so let's just go through them. So you, you click the. First I click this, which is the major box. Which was yeah. The, and then it brought up the ones at the top. Yes. I saw the CL support. I went ahead and clicked it. Um, right. And that was the, that is the thing that uh, typically was missing or is missing when you just accept the default values. So you really need to do this. Okay, fantastic. So, and then you press install while downloading or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And then um, um, uh, the whole thing worked. And in addition to modification of this, she verified that the path, can you once more go on the path window? She verified that in, in uh, the, edit environment variables, this path where this is being installed is added so that we can locate the CL and the and make program. So now we deleted all directories that called cloud mesh dash something. Okay, so this way we deleted all of these uh, uh, things okay now in the sp directory uh, you don't uh, in the sp directory um there is no cloud mesh dash in there okay good so this is just your homework assignment this is great so go to cm directory again um so now i would like you to go to the home directory um uh, the one above cm you have user Rhonda. In that, you should have an ENV3 directory. I would like you to delete that ENV3 directory. Oh, really? Okay. So we're, I'm going to do a whole new setup, I guess. <laughs> That's correct. Because okay. we, I, I don't know what you have done in between. And it could be that there's some other, other thing going on. Um, um, so what we try to now verify if the observation that you actually have um, is... Um, that you have installed this correctly is, is indeed the case. So I, I, don't, I don't have, I don't doubt you that you have done this install correctly, but I'm, I I'm, do. Verifying. Okay. I'm just verifying this. Okay, so now yeah, okay. Kill, the, kill the window, the command prompt window in the background that you have. Just uh, 
press the X. So now you open up a new one. So the first thing we do is, is we do color space F0. Yes, excellent. So now we resize this window. Good. Uh, so now we have uh, something that I have a bit, a bit easier time to see. Yeah, I didn't. I always so, forgot. What so I now, uh, now what we what we want to do is here is, is is we want to create a new virtual environment. But before we do this, we verify that you have the right version of Python, and uh, and and also if you have a version of pip installed. So now you say Python minus minus version. Now you say pip minus minus version. Good. So you have the newest version of, of the stuff. And uh, now you say where Python. So good. So now you say Python minus m vn space vn env v e n v <laughs> space and then capital e n v three and again the reason why we use e n v three because no one in this one might would be choosing this so that we have a unique environment okay enter and we're making a new virtual we're making a new python installation so just to make sure that there's nothing there that um it can interfere with whatever we have done. Okay. So also on your computer, I would like that you close PyCharm. All right. Chrome. And there's some other colorful thing happening. It says, oh, that's just Slack. That's Slash, yeah. or yeah. Slack, yeah. Yeah, I would like that you that you kill all of them because I would like to make sure that we have um, all main memory uh, associated so that we can do things faster. Good, excellent. So now uh, we need to activate the, the ENV3. So you type in ENV3, uh, capital naturally. Right? Yeah, 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 sorry. Uh, backslash scripts. Uh, and this needs to be having no spaces. Backslash scripts. Scripts was, would typically be capitalized S. And then backslash activate. Uh, lowercase activate. And then enter. You, and then enter. This will be automatically. Of completing. So this way you have now, you can now say where Python. And your Python in the ENV3 should be showing up as the first Python that you see in that list, which is the case, see? Yeah. And so what I recommend you to do is, is, is write a program that in, in Cloud Mesh that executes where and figures out if in the first line of the return, ENV3 is in there. So this way you can actually figure out if your environment is properly installed. So now we do actually pip minus minus version. Oh, actually it's Python minus version. So we haven't actually done that yet. But because you see it, this is, um, there should not be an issue. So we should be seeing 3.81. Okay, good. So now, now we say um, a pip minus, uh, minus version. And you see that it uses yeah. a built-in version of, uh, of pip that is in 3.81. In your outside environment, you have already updated. So you have 2002. Now we need to update pip. So you say pip, install pip, followed by minus capital U. What's the minus capital U mean? Update. Oh, okay. So now we, we get a new version of pip in this to make sure that this latest version works. I hope this works, but I like new versions typically, but there may be sometimes an issue with those. This error that you see here can be ignored because you can say pip 
minus minus uh, version, you should be seeing uh, a regular. Yeah, okay. 2002. So now we actually have Python set up and we have a vanilla version. So what we now do is, is we install Cloud Mesh Installer. So what we do is, is we do pip install. <coughs> Cloud Mesh dash installer. Yep. And then enter. So this goes now out to PyP, finds the newest version of Cloud Mesh Installer, installs all the dependencies, and um, brings Cloud Mesh Installer into your uh, PIP environment. So now you say, um, uh, and, and uh, see it says Cloud Mesh Installer version 4.3.11. That seems the newest version. Sometimes throughout the semester, I may do new versions of Cloud Mesh Installer. In order for you to get the new version of Cloud Mesh Installer, you say pip install Cloud Mesh dash installer uh, minus capital U. This way you can always check if you are in the newest version. And if you're in the newest version, it essentially says for all of them skipping, skipping, skipping because you was already installed. And it actually gives you the version in the first line there. See, see 4.3.11. So this is just a security measurement that you have everything new. So now we try to do uh, a careful install. Typically, this is not necessary. We could be just doing the Cloud Mesh install, installer on multipass. But in this case, what we want to do is we want to verify if maybe another error has been creeping in somewhere in a Cloud Mesh. And uh, we are uh, only installing at this time the Cloud Mesh shell. So what we now do is, is we do Cloud Mesh dash installer. Oh, we need to go in into the CM directory. Sorry, CDCM at this time. And uh, we do here maybe a PWD or so, so just, uh, uh, I don't know, PWD uh, doesn't exist actually. Um, it doesn't really matter, but we, we see the path on the command prompt. That's really important that we are standing in this CM directory and that the CM directory is in your is in your user because this is how all our documentation works. If you place a CM directory somewhere else, which is technically possible, you can do this. One thing I actually forgotten is, is you had a previous install of Cloud Mesh. I want you to go in your file browser and go to your home directory uh, in Rwanda and uh, there is the .cloud mesh directory that you see there. You click on this and you delete this. So, so far we haven't actually installed Cloud Mesh, but this is the directory that is typically being created uh, at when we type the first time CMS help. So what we now test is, is, is this is actually created when you do something or do you have some other issue. So now we go in and into, cloud, into the CM directory and we type in Cloud Mesh dash installer git clone and a CMS. This downloads the most elementary version of Cloud Mesh shell. This is just shell without any cloud commands or any other fancy commands. In. So I am confident that your machine will be able to handle this. Well, I know I've done this all before, but it's making more sense now, I guess, you know, after having spent more time. Well, uh, you, uh, it's, it's a good thing to run these things over three times. Yeah. And technically, you could create, actually, yourself, the previous students, actually, last year, they created themselves a butt script with all these commands. And so they had essentially reinstalled Cloud Mesh. So they blew away all these directories, all from the command line, and then reinstalled a fresh version of Cloud Mesh, just to be, just to be safe, right? Yeah. Um, and that happened because they had these other machine learning classes and they installed all kinds of libraries from that class and they destroyed some of their, of their uh, Cloud Mesh code because they were not using um, different things, essentially. So now uh, we want to install it. So just um, you can use the previous command, Cloud Mesh Installer. 
And instead of saying git clone, you erase both of them and you simply say install CMS. And then enter. So now as you see, as this, this will install, it, it, it writes you on top what it actually will actually do. And now goes to each one of those repositories that you have downloaded and does an installation, a pip install minus e dot into these directories, which is a typical Python way of doing this. But so that you don't have to go to one, two, three, four, five directories, it does this automatically. One of the things, however, which is, uh, which is not happening is, is, is we don't yet have all the libraries or the repositories for creating the manual. So the manual at this time will not function. Um, at one point, I will be fixing the Cloud Mesh installer and make a completely separate manual. Uh, but um, I found out that uh, in some previous classes, they needed to have the manual at this time already. And so I put this in. So I, I will be removing this so that this error does not occur. So for this time, you, you can just safely ignore that error. So the good news is, is now we actually see, and, and what we need to do is, is, is when we install anything in Cloud Mesh, we need to be looking at all the lines that we have now there. So we need to be scrolling backwards to where we started this command. So we entered this command. It, uh, yeah. And now we need to scroll forward and identify if there's any error or warning coming that looks suspicious to us because that's where the, and, and the first error that comes, we need to be looking very carefully at. So, so far- Will it be a different color or is it just looking for the word? Uh, it, just looking for the word. The, if it's a different color, I have detected an error, but it may be coming in black or another color. Um, uh, so you need to be looking very carefully through this and identify if there's an issue here. So far, it looks all good. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out how carefully to look. Like, I don't Very look. carefully. <laughs> yeah, okay. Like read every, okay, I get it. But I just... Every single line, every single character. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. So this is not something you can skip, right? Uh -huh. Typically, this works because we have done this on Windows. So now we say, error could not find satisfy requirement storage. But this is coming from yeah, the yeah. manual. And I, as I said, this is, this is, this is, that you can ignore that error from the manual because yeah. we haven't downloaded the full version of Cloud Mesh yet. So far, this looks all good. Now, it even gives you the timers of how this installed. And we actually have, have done a complete install. Okay, so now we need to go to the beginning of the line and remove the months really and May. Yeah, that's something that you got from your clipboard. So what we now need to do is, is we need to call CMS help. And that's really important because this command will create the dot uh, cloud mesh directory under Rhonda. So if you, if you observe on the right hey. side, you will think. So if yeah. this thing is created, we know cloud mesh is actually working and it lists all the commands. So now to verify that this thing works, we don't do a complete test, but we just do a simple command. We just simply do CMS banner, and then we type in help, not help, uh, so we type in um, hello, something else the help. Yeah. I mean, I still want it, it doesn't really matter. So it's just, just the text, type in enter. You want to quotes around the hello? No, or? no, just just write this. Okay. And okay. so now, as you can see, this is calls the command banner, and it puts the hello in these in these quotes, and we know this is now working. Now, if you say yeah, if you say a CMS a clear, this may not work. I don't know how this works on Windows. Well, I don't want to clear simple. my screen yet because I want to. You don't want to. Uh, no, just stay clear. It doesn't really make a, a difference. Okay, so I just didn't want to like. At this time, I think we, we are, and as you can see, clear is not implemented in, in Windows. So, so there are some commands that don't work that well. Now, one of the things that you can do is, 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 is you, there is a command that's called debug. And that's always good. So you can say CMS debug and then space on. Oh. <laughs> 
So here you see the usage on this. So if you don't use the usage, say enter. So this now switches, switches on the debug mecha mechanism. And now you can repeat the command CMS banner hello. Yeah, and then enter. And you get some additional messages, essentially a timer at the end that is being printed. So we know now that the debug actually also works. You can also say CMS set list, which lists you all the internal variables for a uh, set list is with space, um, which tells you all the internal variables that uh, Cloud Mesh at this time uh, knows about. So you see timer true and trace and reverse and those things. If you set CMS debug off, and then enter and do the set list command again. So they're all set to false. Uh, uh -huh. So you don't see any debug messages. So what we want to do is we want to keep for now CMS in debug on mode. So you do CMS debug on. So now we do the next step in our process. And the next step that we do is, is, is uh, we are currently working on completing the multi-pass um, installation. So, uh, so in order for the multi-pass installation to work, uh, the command CL uh, needs to be working in this terminal. So, th so this is good. So you have yeah. configured this correctly. And, it, and you know, once, we, once we are done with the installation, we will be figuring out if uh, there's a programming bug in Cloud Mesh C, uh, multipass because you still report errors. And then we just try to figure out what that error is. Okay. And um, uh, uh, we also want to figure out if you can do n make. And also that works. So one of the things is, is, is I've actually posted a, a program called uh, Cloud Mesh dash Windows in which you need to be verifying if, for example, these things come. And as you can see, this is, there's a version number and you can see this is optimizing compiler version is in there. So if that's in the response, then that, that is uh, showing us that this stuff is being correctly installed. So it would be extremely useful if you could be completing this. So instead of working on the Ronda command or on the verification of the other homework for, for uh, this class, I think it would be much more useful to just do the um, uh, completion of the Cloud Mesh dash Windows uh, package so that you can um, you know, test if your Windows environment is complete. Good, so now uh, let's do um, the Cloud Mesh Windows command installation. So we do, you, I'm just going to clarify what you just said. Like what we're doing uh, now, let, you need to help we, we are doing now something simpler than Cloud Mesh Multipass, which is the Cloud Mesh Windows uh, installation stuff. So now let's do Cloud Mesh dash installer, git clone Windows. Mm. So as you see, this is actually downloads the Cloud Mesh dash Windows. So if you do a dir, you have a new dir in there. Uh, there's a Cloud Mesh Windows command. So now if you do CMS, if you go into CD, uh, oh, if you do, let's do the Cloud Mesh installer. If you do, um, and I don't know if that now works because I just did this in the morning. Cloud Mesh installer, install Windows. So it now actually, uh, uh, technically it's not necessary, but it, it, it's very careful now. It re-goes through every single of the directories and recompiles them for the Windows uh, bundle. So now you can say CMS help and you should see a Windows command. And so if you say CMS Windows, it will showcase you what uh, manual page I've actually done. Okay, so there's a VM CMS Windows check on that you can type in and it will fail. 
And you know, one of the tasks for the class is, is, is to complete this command. So say CMS, um, CMS uh, uh, Windows check. And then say enter. So as you can see, this is not implementation environment. So it actually says, this is how do you figure out if you are standing right now in a virtual env that's activated that has env3 in it? So this is some 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 question that I'm posing to the class, and so hopefully someone clever enough uh, from the class will figure this out. So let's assume this uh, test has passed. Uh, now we go um, and again, this is a homework assignment for 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 going into Cloud Mesh Dash Windows to fix these things. Maybe you can open now uh, PyCharm, then I sh show you what needs to be finished. Okay. <clears throat> so open PyCharm. I'm opening it. It just, I'll, I'll right. move it over as soon as I get to it. <clears throat> So, and uh, you should use a PyCharm in the form that you actually open the directory and don't use the open project feature. I, don't, I didn't even know that I did open a project. Well, I think we did that correctly. Yeah, so we did this correctly with you before. Okay, make it a little bit wider. Yeah. The window, we don't need to show much on this. I just want to yeah. show you. It won't, it doesn't seem to want to grab it. This Okay, that sounds good. So now go to the uh, you are go to the cloud mesh windows thing. Yeah, on the left hand project selection, click on the triangle. <clears throat> so what we have there is you go to cloud mesh. Uh, yeah, and you go to windows, and there are two files with and uh, go to command open command. Man, open. Oh, okay, one open. Okay. And now you go to Windows there, windows.py, which is lowercase. This is our command, Windows. So if you click on this, you see, you see the manual page under usage. And you see there under Windows, so we use object-oriented programming in line number 34 to start the class Windows. And the Windows class has certain methods included. We read from our uh, doc ops at the variables vn and we expand the path and then we call somehow commands such as for example the python minus version so what you can do is this is uh, because we know that we uh, reach the the first one in, in 39 that is not yet implemented so why don't you out comment this one and uh out comment this was a hash I, I just didn't want to try if that's what you really wanted me to do. Okay. And then uh, 41 was a hash and 42 was a hash. So if someone else can maybe implement this. So now let's um, um, work on the check command. See, they have Python version test. Okay. So now yeah. that command is obviously implemented in the file called windows.py with capital P. Uh, with capital W. So go to the right hand side where you select your files and you click on this with a capital W, the Windows. Yeah, you will already you see it. I don't uh, see no, no. capital W. Oh, this one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you click on this and this is our class. So our class is Windows and we create a st um, actually. Um, uh, I've, I've created here static methods. So go back and into Windows. Um, I've actually made, uh, made a mistake. I save this? Um, no, go back and into the Windows thing. So let's make a, uh, uh, take out the static methods. Just so go, yeah, out. yeah, just take it, take it out, yeah. The line, no, 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 no. Uh, 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 do undo the hashes. Delete line number thirty-two. Uh, Twenty-two. Sorry. Just delete this one line. Just right? this one line and the previous line in line number eight also. Oh, okay. 
So uh, since we are now using uh, um, 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 object-based methods, each method must have a self comma after the bracket. Not there. Yeah, first bracket. First bracket. This has a comma after it. Yeah, yeah. Self comma. Self. We are in Python. Python self comma. S E L. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Self comma. Comma. And each one of these methods must have this. So you can copy the self comma and put it in front of each one uh, of these parameters that you have. And the next one is VN, same thing there. And scroll down if you have other methods. Good. So now, what we decided is, is we work on the self command method. So the first thing is, is we, we print our banner, which comes from Cloud Mesh. The second thing is, is, is we use our shell run from Cloud Mesh to run the command to redirect the output into result. Then we print the result. Then um, um, we, we need to be figuring out if test is in result. Test needs, however, to be in in curly brackets, just as result is, because we pass this in as a command, okay? So there need to be curly brackets around here. Um, and these need to be there. And so we just print a help message there, and then say, if the test is not in result, then we have an error. Otherwise, this test has passed, okay? Yeah. So now let's take a look at our, our Windows function again, the windows.py function. <clears throat> so we are passing now to the object W, which is a Windows class. We are invoking the check command class, right? And in the first version, we do Python and check it for that version. Ah, uh, OK, yeah. The second one is actually in 45, should actually be pip minus version, right? Because yeah. you check for pip yeah. uh, version something. Yeah. So now we have CLI. We don't know what we need to test for. So we need to have comma test equals something, right? So it's right there, test equal, uh, you know, just like, no, where, do, where is it comma after the quote, right? Okay. Test equal to, and then question mark. I don't know what that is. Well, we did it just now. I mean, it can, this is. Um, so now type in CL because you have CL obviously correctly installed, right? Yeah, I think so. So now um, um, what we should probably do is, is, is we should be copying the uh, Microsoft R line and then the version could change, right? So I, I would just simply copy everything till the version. Them yeah, this, yeah, just copy this text. And, and put this in there. So then you call us again and let's do another test. Right. So does duplicate that line that you have the 46. And let's do, um, do another test. And then enter. And as you can see, there is this usage line, usage colon CL. So we know if this comes, you have actually CL started because it actually prints out its own help message. Yeah. So uh, what we do is, is we copy that line and test for that line. Okay. It's not the most efficient thing, but it actually does work because we could be saving the results in an intermediate variable and so forth, but that's not, not, not important. So now we do the same thing with NMake. Okay, so let's figure out what n make prints out. And as we see here in n make, uh, it prints out the first line again, but has a different version, right? No, you're, you're going in the wrong thing. 
you need to go on the end make. Oh, you're right. All right, you're right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it has a different version. Uh, but this is the maintenance utility version versus the. That's correct. That's correct. So now we do the same thing with NMAC and we, we uh, put a test after this. Yeah. Test equal to. Okay. So now it's a little bit more problematic because we see there's a fatal error on the output. Yeah. But this is because it expects a make file in the current directory. Oh. So, so uh, we cannot actually check now for, for this thing because it now says fatal error. But even if this fatal error comes, it's still okay, right? right? Yeah. Because we have started this. So we don't do another test, we just simply say this. Now let's do Python. Uh, so the one good new uh, the, let's do Python minus minus version because this is what we what we also do right so we want to figure out what version of Python we actually have and we have the version three point. But it shows it like this, right? I mean, is this what we wanted to see instead of that? I mean, uh, no, it simply says this is just a, do, does a simple is that particular substring in the result? Okay. Okay. So what we haven't actually done is, is if this is the 64-bit version of Python. So we need now to figure out a program that actually starts Python or that figures out if Python is in 64-bit. But one other thing that we, that we uh, so that's one of the uh, things that we still have to add. But we can actually say where Python. Can you, uh, can you say where Python? Yeah. So now, see the first line of this uh, return? So now, um, what we could do is, is we could be redirecting this where Python to a file, convert the output to uh, strings, and then figure out if env3 is in the first string. And if so, it's correct. If it's not, then it's an error. Uh -huh. So, but we don't do this now. We don't have enough time for this, but this would be yeah. an easy homework assignment to figure out if this works. So now we have actually modified uh, Python, uh, this, the, these classes, uh, and um, we, let's, let's just run it. Let's just run the check and see if we, if we got somewhere, right? Yeah. So, so now we say CMS okay. Windows check. And as you see, this is, is we see some tests passed, but there is this end make thing somehow here at the at the end, uh, which which didn't work maybe because of the fatal error that we actually actually had, <laughs> uh -huh. and and um, so uh, um, but but I think we 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 could be out commenting our end make check. So why don't we go ahead to. 48 so yeah. someone can figure out why you know how to make that um, working maybe with a try accept and so forth you know so just uh, execute it again and as you see is all test passed yeah. So it's really good. Right? So this is, <laughs> well, this, is, this, is yeah. this is this is fantastic. Naturally, we haven't done all the tests that are needed, but at yeah. least we have a framework in which we now can test if the setup is correct. Why is this such a good program? Because actually, when you do your projects at one point, you have to write these tests for whatever you deploy, and so this could be a really good good beginning for what you may actually do in your project. And then before you actually run anything on your infrastructure, you may actually have to test if your infrastructure is correct. So when you develop these little tests to make sure that uh, whatever you have set up is correctly done. Right. Okay, good. So now we know Cloud Mesh in its principle works. Now what we actually have to do is, is we have to look at Cloud Mesh multipass. So everything till here works. And if something were to go wrong, we could be reinstalling this and come back to this particular state. Now, one of the things I forgot to do now is this with you is this is we have to actually check this 
code modification in, in into our uh, into uh, our repository so that we don't lose this. So what I want you to do is, is open up the web browser and browse to GitHub where we have Cloud Mesh Windows. So open up whatever favorite web browser you use. And uh, you actually need to go to a different repository. It's not there. It's actually, if you remove everything from the minus community in the URL, go, uh, yeah, remove the minus community. No, no, you should be keeping the cloud mesh. Oh, sorry, sorry. Enter. And in there, uh, you will, if you type in into your search, you'll find that Windows thing that you can also browse through this just like you did. And technically, we should actually do this through a fork, but we didn't actually do a fork. So what we can do is, is we can visit the file Cloud Mesh. So visit the browser Cloud Mesh. And we have modified in there, uh, in the Windows directory, the uh, Windows file. So you open that. You open the, uh, and this is really not how you should do it, but for yeah. today it, it, it works. You open the pencil and technically you, know, and you can now modify whatever you have done, but go in into your file in, in PyCharm. Yeah. Copy the entire thing. Say command A or whatever is needed to highlight everything or control A or yeah. Windows A or there, there you go. So copy this in into your clipboard. Yeah. Then go back in there, do there, highlight everything and replace it. And then be careful. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so that, yeah. that seems good. And then if you scroll down, you see a commit message. So now you write in and into the uh, repositories. This is um, uh, changes uh, uh, for Gregor's tutorial on the Cloud Mesh dash Windows assignment. Sorry for cloud. Yeah, it's fine. And then. Uh, you just. Uh, and that, but you want something here too? No, it's fine at this time. It's okay. just because I know what, what we have done. Okay. There, typically, you would write some more details here. So, propose a change, know. yes. Have you clicked on it? Now, create yeah. a pull request. Here, you can actually once more scroll down first. Uh, so, here you can you can actually see the differences and double check if what you have done is actually the correct changes and it looks pretty all right to me. Yeah. I don't even know why there's return true or null, null in there. So I don't even think that I have done that. So just uh, propose the change, say create pull request. And, and, um, and, uh, and now you create the pull request there. This is la one more last time where you can actually put a comment in. And now you need to do another one. You need to actually visit uh, the Cloud Mesh uh, Windows um, thing again in GitHub. Okay. And you need to go to the other file that you modified. And go to Windows and go to Command, uh, uh, go to Capital uh, Windows, I think. No, 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 not there. That's what we did last. Okay. So we need to go to the capital windows file. And so that's the file that we've now modified. In addition to this, uh, you do the editor there, right? And go on this one, highlight everything at this time. And again, you can't actually do the highlight everything because I may have used PyCharm to do um, line modifications and then it will get confused, so. Okay, but see, this is the window. This is the, oh, no, okay, this is, we're in the, okay. Yeah, so highlight everything and put it in your clipboard.
go to the browser, uh, use the edit button. And again, you should, one should not do this. <laughs> you're teaching, you're, you're creating these synapses in my brain. <laughs> I went through a training on that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the self, I see the self, so now, now do the same thing. Simply say this is uh, prayer exchanges for the uh, uh, cloud mesh dash windows assignment. Create the pull request. Yeah. And then create the pull request. Good. So this will create uh, two pull requests that I will be accepting at one point. And they're also uh, good. It actually says that this bunch does not have any conflict. If there would be a conflict coming up, one would have to resolve these conflicts before uh, uh, the pull request can be granted. Good. So now uh, let's go back to our um, our other task on Cloud Mesh multi multitask. So cl uh, close the pie charm so that we make sure we have enough um, in our memory. So now what you want to do is, is, is uh, you want to say Cloud Mesh dash installer. And again, if, if the CL would fail, you shouldn't even do this command because uh, if CL is not there, uh, this cannot be installed. So now Cloud Mesh Dash Installer, uh, git clone uh, multipass, and then enter. So as you can see, it, it downloads now a library that's called Cloud Mesh Dash Cloud. And the error that you actually saw was in this particular library, because I believe it needs to recompile the cryptographic um, uh, Python li related libraries, and they require um, on Windows a compiler. And uh, there's no way around that. Um, and uh, it's actually not the error in multipass that's the issue, but the error in cloud that I believe recompiles the, um, um, the cryptographic libraries. So now we need to be installing it. And so now the problem is this is, is we want to um, observe from where we started out. So one trick I sometimes do is, is, is I put a lot of hash characters in into this command line, do, do a lot of hash characters in there. Just type in hash, a lot of them, till the end. And then you type in enter. So as you can see, this is, this is easy to be seen, right? So you know now this starts right there. OK, yeah. So now um, we, we do cloud mesh dash installer. install multipass. So uh, now this will take a while. Uh, and, and before you enter this command, you oh. get yourself your coffee, you come okay. back, you drink your coffee while you look at this terminal carefully. And if you see an error, you make a mental note, there is something wrong and then we have to re-go back there. So the, see, there's one error there, the manual thing. Yeah. But we already know the manual is not an, a needed because we haven't actually put the manual into place. We don't have all the uh, requirements yet fulfilled for manual. Same thing here, same manual error, so we can ignore that. So now it starts installing stuff in cloud, which is, our problematic library. That's where the cryptographic libraries used to be located that require the compiler to compile things. So we need to be really careful here, trying to figure out if this actually still works or not.
So there will come an error in Boto Core that says that the doc utils are incompatible at one point. That error, we haven't yet figured out if this actually causes a real issue or not. Um, we, in the past, have simply ignored that. At one point, those who are working with Amazon and so forth may actually have to figure out, if, you know, what, what do we do about, you know, fixing that error. error. So as you now see, this is, this is actually downloads the Pi Windows libraries, which is good because this is probably, and it actually it does get the cryptographic libraries now that have a past. So that's pretty good. And um, why don't you open up a new terminal? We forgot to show other people here how do you check if you are running Python 64-bit version? So open, uh, open yeah, a new fine. terminal. And in that terminal, you just simply type in Python. You want me to type, what was type that? Type in just Python. I was gonna do that color. Yeah, color F0, yeah, that's right. Without the minus. And type in just Python there. And uh, as you see, as it says 64 bit, that's what we need at the end of the slide. So, okay, see, there is this doc utils, uh, uh, kill, the, kill this terminal that you just have with the Python in there. Click on the X. So, see, there is this red error. That's the only error that I'm still concerned about, but I don't, uh, at this time, we haven't actually seen if this causes an issue. So, at one point in um, Cloud Mesh, we may have to restrict our doc utils to this particular version so that there's no error coming in Boto Core. We also may want to see if, if we can upgrade Boto Core or if Boto Core uses an outdated version in here. This will take a little bit uh, a while because there's so many libraries to be installed. And um, there's also one other library that we are using that's called Humanize. And we are not sure if we need to be replacing this with something else yet. Um, we don't know if that's yet working on every single operating system. And um, as you see, as this is we even introduced NumPy and Pandas. Technically, we could be doing this without all of these things. But for some reason, um, uh, someone in this class has decided to use NumPy for some of the uh, backend services. I didn't think it was necessary, uh, but uh, I think they, they just did a shortcut because NumPy and Pandas are pretty big libraries uh, and, and we, we don't really need them for, for uh, Cloud Mesh. Uh, we have other, other ways of doing that kind of things. So, um, so they are now compiling this whole thing and the Sphinx libraries are only used for the manual. They're, they're introduced into, into the manual. And as you see, there's also Selenium being introduced. This is actually something for, um, that we typically only use for Amazon. So we may be able to move this library into a different uh, dependency uh, uh, or requirements file from a different repository. So there are some improvements that we can do at this time in the cloudmesh.cloud library because the requirements file could be cleaned up quite a bit there. Mm -hmm. We, we, we really don't need, use all, uh, several of these libraries at all. Mm -hmm. And then the, naturally, if we have fewer requirements, uh, the, the deployment process is, is faster, obviously. See that reference to dogpile. To me, that was a, it used to be an old search engine dogpile that would go to all these different search engines. I haven't, I'm not, we are not using this in Cloud Mesh. So there must be some dependency on a library that we have that uses dogpile internally. Yeah. And, and I don't know which one that is. So uh, we have something that's called um, uh, pip compile 
that lists us all the dependencies of all the packages in a tree yeah. kind of a form. Uh, but I really did not have time to look into this and, and, and uh, make the uh, dependency list smaller. Yeah, understandable. So that's the reason why I said to you, Susan, now you want to get, oh, here we go. So you want to get your coffee and, you know, yeah. drink your <laughs> yeah. coffee while you look at this, not uh -huh. while you make your coffee, right? Because yeah, right. the important part happens here that actually lists the errors. So the good news is so far, we haven't actually seen any, any really important error. So now it installs multipass. So and if the error does occur that we had previously, we know then we have actually some issue in cloud mesh that we need to be verifying. So now one of the things that we want to now do is we want to do CMS help just to see if the uh, multipass command is in there. I think it's a cause. <laughs> so, <clears throat> but that's not an important test at this time. Yeah, but it works. Uh, but it's, uh, it has many more commands and one of the commands should be multipass. Yeah. So now we can say CMS multipass and it should print out the help message for multipass. And so all of this is good. We only know that we only implemented in multipass the images. Now we need to be figuring out if you have multipass installed on your machine, right? So uh, one of the things that you can do is oh, you can type multipass in here in your environment. Because if this is not installed, then, then uh, we will not be able to run this command. So that's good. So now I'll do CMS, uh, CMS multipass again so that we were reminded about the commands that we have. And remember the only command we implemented was, was the images command. So if we type in CMS multipass images, so we should either see the error that you, you observed or it should work. Okay, enter. Yeah. Well, isn't that astonishing? Yeah. Everything works. Yeah. You have not an error. You have everything is perfectly done. Congratulations. Right.